CN8's Emmy Award winning It's Your Call with Lynn Doyle starts now. What would an impending Eagles-Giants game be without a little controversy? Well, this time it's not whether Donovan McNabb should be starting quarterback or not, but rather if injured Plaxico Burris should play. Of course, his injury is not your typical run-of-the-mill football injury. This guy is recovering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Hi there, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle, and this is the case of what some are calling the Giant Fool. A football player, a nightclub, and a loaded pistol. Not the greatest combination, but one that did come together Saturday night and has now resulted in the Giants star's arrest and suspension from the game. First, let's find out what our guests have to say. In Union, New Jersey, we are joined by our old friend, Steve Adubato, who is an MSNBC media analyst and the host of CNA's One on One with Steve Adubato. He is also the author of What Were They Thinking? Crisis Communication, The Good, The Bad, and The Totally Clueless. Hey, Plaxico, get Steve's book. <laughs> Here in the studio with me is Christopher Cavett, who is a certified NFL agent as well as an entertainment and sports attorney with the law offices of Lloyd Z. Remick. Joining us from New York is Michael Schmidt, who is a reporter with the New York Times. And rounding out our panel is Sheil Kapoor. Padia, who is a sports producer for Philly.com. That's the home of the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Daily News. This is a great panel. I am very excited to have these guys here with us. You know what, Chris, I think this is where most people get really irritated with um, sports figures today because it's like $35 million. You're a star. Everyone in the country knows who you are. Why would you put it all at risk? I mean, any insight into why not just him, but some athletes act that way? Well, Lynn, it's an interesting question. And the reason is there are a couple of reasons for it. One, obviously, we're in an economic recession nationwide, globally. So the average person working nine to five has a difficult time recognizing a salary of $35 million over a five-year contract, $11 million guaranteed. When you, when you look at that, but what you have to realize in sports, in sports, especially in football, where you have an average lifespan of 3.2 years on grass, 3.4 years on, on turf, right. what you're looking at there is the average lifespan of a ball player is so short that those millions are really spread out aren't going to be spread out over 30-some years, so it's really clumped together, and it's very difficult. But here's the sad thing. In Plaxico's situation, if he's worried about people coming at him, if he's worried about his defense, a lot of our clients, a lot of our friends, they have security for that reason. I want to ask Chris, who is you know, a certified NFL agent, if he could explain this whole concept of, of the Giants' right to um, take him off of their reserve list, essentially putting him um, on a list for people who have done things that are detrimental to the team. Absolutely. The NFL, NFL players have a union, the NFLPA, NFL Players Association. There's a collective bargaining agreement. Under Article 10 of the collective bargaining agreement, there are a number of different penalties, fines, actions, discipline that can be taken where there's conduct detrimental to the team, which is obviously a very vague, very broad phrase, the team has the right to suspend players without pay. So right now, the Giants and the action that they took by taking Plaxico Burris and saying, you can no longer play for us for the duration of the season, including the postseason. Correct. That action is legal. That action is available under the collective bargaining agreement, and they can do that and they exercise that right. Now, the NFLPA has put out a statement that they're not sure that what the Giants have done works with the collective bargaining agreement, so there's going to be an investigation into that. The interesting thing here, the interesting thing here is unlike the Michael Vick situation, to this point, he hasn't pled guilty and he's not been found guilty. So the Giants have taken a step without him actually being found guilty in a court of law. Let's talk a little bit about the, the Giants' reaction. I know Steve uh, you know, specializes in crisis management. How would you two here in the studio um, assess how the Giants handled this? Did they do enough quickly enough? Well, I'm not surprised by what the Giants did and, and how they did, and here's why. Plaxico has had a number of incidents with the team. The, earlier this season, he was suspended for two weeks, one of which of those weeks was a game that he missed. Coming into this game, he had a hamstring injury. He was ruled inactive for that game. And then, at, then he's out at the nightclub. There have, been, there have been too many distractions to the team. I think what people forget sometimes, and Jerry Glanville said it best, he said the NFL stands for not for long. <laughs> and with, with talent in the NFL, it's all about what can you do for me on the field. If you're detrimental to the team, if you're not performing, you're not a good team member. Here's another interesting point. We've got the fact that Amani Toomer, who is one of the captains of the Giants, has come out and said that it is becoming a distraction. And last month, Plaxico was interviewed by Fox Television, and he says, 
I can't blame anyone but me for the things I've done wrong. I am my own worst enemy, he right. says. And what if this had happened to a player like Eli Manning, who obviously they need in each and every game, and who has, at, at least at this point, a seemingly spotless record? Do you think they would be as aggressive in punishing him? I think that's an excellent point, Lynn, and here's, here's why. Imagine if the Giants were losing. Or imagine if the Giants were in the Eagles' position where they weren't eliminated from the playoffs just yet. I think we'd really paint a different picture. This is an 11-1 team, going to be the number one seed in their conference. So it is a whole different ball game. Obviously, quarterback situation like that, you're losing a big, big player there. That's someone who actually has to initiate every play, handing the ball off, throwing the ball. But this also brings me to mind Trell Owens. T.O. was our star wide receiver. When he was here, we saw what the Eagles did. When he left, we saw what happened. And the team eventually got so fed up. They just they sat him down. You know, it's interesting. We went 50 minutes of this show without anyone bringing up <laughs> T.O., which I find remarkable because I thought someone was going to have a comparison between at least the public persona and attitude of Plaxico Burris and that of Terrell sure. Owens. And, and it's a, it is a good comparison, not because I brought it up, but think about this. The Tennessee Titans got fed up with Adam Pacman Jones. Right. The Philadelphia Eagles get fed up with Terrell Owens. What happens? The Dallas Cowboys signed both of them. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys signed both of them. Enough now, said. <laughs> now, now Pac-Man's had some problems. And here's, here's the point, too, with Plaxico. This is a law. Three and a half years is the minimum. If there's a plea bargain here, it can go down to two. But that two-year plea bargain has no parole. So if he's guilty or pleads guilty, he will be doing time. Yeah, I do want to thank all of the guests. Michael Schmidt from the New York Times, thanks so much for being with us. My good friend, Steve Adubato, always wonderful to have you here. Make sure you get his new book and here in the studio with me, Chris and Shield. Thanks very much.